Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about quadratic functions. So this is the first video on quadratic functions, right? And uh, we're going to be covering up everything about quadratic functions in our series. So this is the first video. This is our uh, website address that is perfect-course.com, our Facebook page to give us your valuable like and our email address to give us your valuable feedback. So let's go ahead and get started, right? So till now, what you've learned is till now you've just been dealing with linear functions. Now, what are linear functions? Linear functions are of the general form that y is equal to mx plus c, where m is something which denotes the slope, right? And c is something which denotes the y-intercept. So I'm assuming that you are good to go in linear functions, which is why I'm throwing words like slope and y-intercept around. So if you don't know anything about linear functions, uh, it's not advisable to go ahead and learn quadratic functions. So it's it's uh, you make sure that you know linear functions before before learning quadratic functions. So linear functions, you know, look like something like this. There's always a straight line. There's always a straight line. There's always a straight line. And as I said that linear functions has two properties: its slope and its y-intercept. Now, what's so special about quadratic functions? So in quadratic functions, what do we do is we go one level higher. Now over here you can see that when I say y is equal to mx plus c, x had 1 on the top. The maximum possible uh, power of x was 1. But what we're going to do here now is we're going to go go one level up. We're going to say the, that y has maximum level of maximum power as 2. So when that happens, you get a quadratic function, right? So the most the most easiest and the most simple quadratic function it's simply y is equal to x square right it's simply y is equal to x square let me go ahead and plot that for you so what we're going to do is we're going to plot y is equal to x square so i'm going to have the value of x and i'm going to have the values of y and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to plot those values here so let's say this is 0 comma 0 and this over here is 1 2 3 and 4 and this here is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. And this one over here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And I hope you know this. This is minus 1 and so on. Now, if I want to plot y is equal to x squared, just see that when x is 0, y is 0 because y is equal to x squared. So this is one point, right? Another point is when x is 1, y is 1, right? So when x is 1, y is 1. So this is another point. What about another point? When x is minus 1, y is still 1. When x is minus 1, y is still 1. So that means that is another point. So similarly, when x is 2, y is 4. And when x is minus 2, y is still 4. So when x is 2, y is 4. And when x is minus 2, y is still 4. Now if I connect these points like these, so if I just connect these points, I'm going to get a, a V-shaped curve, you know, more like a U-shaped curve, which actually is expanding upward. So this is what we call a parabola, right? So this is what we call a parabola. And uh, the equation for this parabola is y is equal to x squared. As you can observe that two values of x, one value of y, one value of y is going to have two values of x. Right, so one value of i is going to have two values of x. Fine. So this is how every quadratic equation uh, graph looks like. Every quadratic equation. Uh, I'm not saying that every quadratic equation is going to look like a U shape. Well, there are going to be a little some transformations of it, but generally it would be somewhat like this. It can be here. 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 Well, in this, or it can be like this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're not going we're not going to confuse you right now that you know what is that and what is that we're going to slowly advance to the next step. Now, as I said, that the maximum possible coefficient for x is actually two. So there would be a coefficient where there would be a value of x where x is one, and there would be a value where x is zero, right? So that will always be there, and there will always be a a constant before this, there will always be a constant before this, and there will always be a constant before this. So this actually makes up the general equation of a 
quadratic equation. So that is y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. So this is what we have as the general equation of a quadratic function. Right? So you're going to be dealing a lot more than just this. Uh, each a, b, and c, all of them have different functions. They have different, uh, they, they actually change the way a quadratic function behaves when their value changes, which is we're going to be, we're going to be doing that in, in the future videos about that, right? And one more thing that is very, very important that a is not equal to zero because if you plug in a to be equal to zero, this merely turns into, uh, linear equation which is not this is something that we do not want right so x has to have a 2 at the top that is actually mandatory for uh, a quadratic function now another important thing is that uh, the uh, this is actually a quadratic function y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c now generally uh, a, a positive quadratic function is going to be like this it is going to cut the x axis at two points and at these points, what is there? At these points, the value of y is equal to 0. So at these points, ax square plus bx plus c is actually equal to 0. So these are the points. These are the, what do you call, the, the value of x which is there. So this value of x and this value of x. Let's suppose this is, uh, let's suppose this is alpha and let's suppose this is beta. Right? This is what we're going to denote them from now. This alpha and beta, they are something which we call the roots of the equation. So what are the roots of the equation? The roots of the equation are the values. So the roots of the equation are the values of x where y is equal to 0. So the roots of the equations are the values of x where y is actually equal to 0. So that is only for this quadratic equation that y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c right so whenever you have this you know that uh, the the graph is going to cut the x axis at two points right and uh, at those two points the value of y will be equal to 0 that means this would be equal to 0 and uh, these would be the roots of these equations now how is this root helpful for me you know what is the meaning of this root well, we're going to be doing a lot more in the future videos about that, but just to give you a fair idea, they will help you in understanding the graph. Let's suppose if I say that y is equal to, let's suppose it's equal to x minus 3 times x minus 2. And I want to sketch this graph. So what I want to do is I want to sketch this graph. So what you do is you say, okay, fine. Uh, let's go ahead and find the roots of the equation. What are the roots of the equation? Roots of the equations are the values of x where y is equal to 0. So what do you do is you substitute x minus 3 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. From here what do you say? You say if x minus 3 is in, into x minus 2 is 0, there are two possibilities. Either x minus 3 will be 0 or x minus 2 will be 0. Right? Because either of them will have to be 0 if the product is 0. So x would be equal to 3 or x would be equal to 2. So how will this curve look like? It will actually look like this. So it will cut the uh, it will cut this curve over here will cut the x axis this point at 3 and at 2 right so this is how this parabola is going to look like you know I'm not giving you an exact picture but I'm showing you this these are the two points at which this this parabola this quadratic equation this function is going to cut the x axis let's take another example let's suppose if I say that y is equal to x plus 5 and let's suppose uh, 2x minus 3. So if that is the case, then what are the roots of the equation? The roots of the equations are the values of y, values of x where y is 0. So what you do is you substitute this to be equal to 0. So this into this is actually equal to 0. So if this into this is 0, there are again two possibilities. Either this would be 0 or this would be 0. So if this is 0, that means x is equal to negative 5. Here 2x is equal to 3, which means x is equal to 3 by 2, which is 1.5. So again, if you were to draw this graph, uh, x, the value of y will be 0 when x is equal to negative 5, let's say here. And the value of y is 0 when x is equal to 1.5, let's say here. That means the graph is actually going to look like this. Let's say this is 1.5.
Fine. So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here. What is the meaning of the roots? The roots means uh, the roots actually mean that the value of y is actually equal to zero. So at these points, the value of y is equal to zero. It helps you to understand the graph. Helps you to understand uh, how does the function look like. Now another thing which I want to share in the introduction part for quadratic equations. When I say y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c, so I said this is how it looks like generally. But if I say that, if I replace the x with y, I say x is equal to a y square plus b y plus c. Then the graph is going to be like this. Right, isn't it? Because if you're replacing the x with y completely, then the graph is going to look something like this. And generally we do not do quadratic equations in this term. But if you get it in this format, that means you can understand that the graph is something like this. But again, we're going to be doing all of it. We're going to be going into complete detail in the future videos, right? But I suppose you've understood what I'm trying to explain here, guys. So thank you very much for watching this video. And don't forget to watch the next part wherein we talk about uh, how to solve a quadratic function, how to get the, get the values of roots, right? So there are many methods to do that. So before we sign off, guys, just don't forget to explore our website. That is perfectbasscourse.com. Give us your valuable like, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to give us your valuable feedback on perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So this would be about this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next.